Welcome to The Right Stuff from Goldspot Pens, a podcast that raises you from pen noob to aficionado in less than 20 minutes. I'm your host, Tom Otto. In this episode, I'll share a beautiful new green pen from Pelican, recommend how to swatch fountain pen inks, and offer advice for attending a pen show for the first time. Last, I'll give away something on my desk. First up, we have the headliner from this week's email newsletter. This new Pelican Suvron M800 Green demo is a refreshing take on a piston filling demonstrator fountain pen. Pelican polishes the leafy green resin to a crystal clear transparency. See the piston mechanism operate as you draw up the ink into the pen's body. To top it all off, Pelican fits a beautiful bicolor 18 karat gold nib on this elegant fountain pen. In Pelican's history of special edition pens, it was the transparent green collector's edition in 1992 that sparked the company's yearly offerings of limited production pens. In the 2023 green demonstrator, Pelican revisits the 30-year-old pen design and updates it with some modern accents. You'll find some slight design tweaks in the cap ring, in the ring here that separates the barrel from the piston knob, and the top cap finial. Josh from the Pelican's Perch does a great job of breaking down the differences, so I'll include a link to his blog in the show notes so you can see it for yourself. Even if you aren't a hardcore Pelican pen collector like Josh, this new Suvron 800 has plenty to love. This clear, bright green body has a solid feel and shows all of the inner workings of the pen. The size of the Suvron 800 is ample and great for people with larger than average hands, I would say, and it's a great poster, which for a guy like me who likes posting the caps on the back of their pens, it is perfectly balanced as well. So it doesn't backweight the pen having the cap posted. The material, although it feels dense and solid, is rather lightweight, so it doesn't really throw off the feeling of the pen right with it posted or unposted. And of course you have the 18 karat gold nib on this. this is, it's a beautiful, beautiful nib. It has a beautiful decoration that is gold and rhodium finished, has the little pelican and the baby chick in there. It's a grail worthy pen and one of the best fountain pen nibs that we offer. And then there's actually a article that we wrote. It's the top five favorite fountain pen nibs of gold spot. You'll find a link to that in the show notes at the bottom as well. And Pelican makes the list because it is just not only a beautiful looking nib, but it's also one of the smoothest and wettest nibs that you could write with. It performs great and it's also very easy to detach from the rest of the pen. You just unscrew it from the grip section there. So you could clean out this pen uh, quite nicely without having to fill it back up over and over again. You could just wash it out from the inside. The other let's say drawback to a demonstrator pen is that of course you can see all over, you know, you can see the entire construction of the pen. However, when you do get ink, let's say inside the grip unit or inside the barrel here, you will want to clean it out completely. So it's great that this pen is, can be disassembled and remove the nib unit so that you could get into the barrel there. And for $880 US retail, 703.95 R price. This is a grail worthy fountain pen and certainly deserves some consideration at the top of your pen collection. Our five star review of the week goes to the baby beluga. Eric J writes, third Opus 88. Mini beluga is a winner. Opus's Yovo extra fine nibs are world class and better than other Yovo nibs from other brands. Enjoy. And for anybody that missed out on this whale of a pocket fountain pen. More belugas are on their way from Opus and should be available to purchase again on the Gold Spot Pens website sometime in June. I have a new segment to add to the podcast, which is the pen tip of the week. Steve Ruckel asks, how do you recommend swatching inks? What paper products and what nibs do you use? So swatching inks can be extremely tedious if you're using a fountain pen. If you have a stash of samples or bottles that can mean lots of time spending cleaning while changing inks. For the purpose of swatching many ink colors, I recommend a dip pen like the Gerbon glass dip pens we featured in this week's newsletter. These glass dip pens are handcrafted in the tradition of 17th century Venetian glass blowers. Each pen is unique, delicate, and rather graceful. Deep grooves in the tip hold the fountain pen ink, distributing it on the paper as you write. 
And the benefit here is that this tip easily washes out. It's not like a fountain pen feed. It could just be easily rinsed off or wiped down similar to a brush. And as for paper, I would recommend using what you commonly write on. So if you have, let's say, an endless recorder notebook with the regalia paper, I would then go to the back of the journal and use it as an ink journal to swatch and write out the various fountain pen inks that you have in your collection. Or you could also use swatch cards like the coloring ink testing books that we have on the Goldspot website. The next pen that we dropped this week is the Omas Ogiva Israel 75. To commemorate the 75th anniversary of Israel's independence, Omas crafted a stunning limited edition fountain pen in the signature Ogiva shape. To make this edition a precious collectible, Omas utilized legacy celluloid in a deep royal blue color. The pen's gold cap ring has Omas Israel 1948 to 2023 engraved along with the two stars of David. The barrel is also engraved with the Omas brand mark and the limited edition number. To top it all off, the 18 karat gold nib is inscribed with 75 years, available in fine, medium, or broad nib sizes with an ebonite feed. Only 75 pieces total were made of the Omas Ogiva Israel 75. This pen fills using a traditional piston fill mechanism. But really the main key point here in terms of aesthetics and uniqueness of the pen is the celluloid. It has a luster, chatoyance, feel, and smell, especially you could smell it in the cap, it has that, that rather it's a camphor, they call it. It's this camphor smell that is totally unique and different than any other acrylic or resin that you could find. And for $895, this pen is still available on the Goldspot website while the edition lasts. The question of the week comes from Toga McGurga, who writes, what advice do you have for someone who, like me who will be attending a pen show for the very first time? The first time can be quite overwhelming, especially if you don't know what to expect at a pen show. As I've been to several shows, both as an attendee and behind the table as an exhibitor, I can offer some quick bite-sized tips for a satisfying pen show experience. The first really important thing to remember is that while pen shows are about pens, they're more about the people. So meet with the vendors, get them talking about their pens, their passion, how they got into pen collecting, what are their favorite pens, what other things that they might recommend that they also sell. Chat with fellow collectors and showgoers. Uh, people love to share their passion for pens and usually will bring their pen collections with them to show to you or to let you handle, uh, try writing with too. Uh, but it's a great way to make some pen pals and pen friends that you might have only met online or through various discussion forums online and to see them face to face. Now, as I mentioned, it's a very social event and most pen shows these days have after hours events where people meet at the hotel bar usually and show off the pens that they brought with them or that they bought at the day at the show. And if you're on social media, I would write your username handle on the name badge you get at the show. And the second most important thing to remember is when shopping, have a list and know what you're looking for. You're shopping at a place that has very, very expensive pens many, many expensive pens. So it's going to be very quick and easy to get into pen debt. So you might want to consult your wish list, something that you've built up, let's say on the Goldspot Pens website, has a wish list on there, or something that you've written down as like your bucket list of pens. And consult and see which pens that you really want to handle in person you didn't want to buy online. Also, there's a perfect place to find vintage pens that you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else. And if you want to customize your fountain pen nib or you need to get your nib fixed by a nibmeister, see if you could get on one of the nibmeisters list before the show or sign up immediately when you first arrive because they tend to fill up pretty quickly with their job cues. And know the price range of the pens you're looking to buy to be aware if you're getting a really good deal or not. And also, you might want to bring some cash and then not be afraid to haggle because a lot of the vendors are there looking to maybe get rid of some stock that hasn't sold throughout the year. And you'd want to look for a pretty good deal, especially when it comes to uh, your more modern types of pens. You might not find a really good deal on vintage because vintage kind of has its own market that goes up with time because it becomes more rarer. But for something that's around and that is fairly common, you might want to see if you could get a pretty good deal. And last but not least, I would also put some focus on your physical 
uh, ability to go to the show because it is a pretty long and grueling day, especially if you're there for multiple hours. So definitely wear comfortable shoes to walk in. Uh, bring a water and a snack just in case. You can maybe bring a bag with you or whatnot and um, and be able to, to take a drink or because you're going to be talking a lot. You're going to be walking around and chatting up with people. So you might want to bring something just to be able to make sure that you're refreshed as, as the day goes on. And then also be mindful of your posture as you might be hunching over looking at the various pens all day so you might want to just make sure that you know you're you're keeping your back straight and that you're not in that you're all supported throughout your entire torso and whatnot coming soon to the website we have the scribo feel cenote launching on tuesday may 30th we have a brand new exclusive from scribo italy and for the first time you can pick the exact pen that you will receive much like the Scribo Field Palisandro we released earlier in the months, Cenote is crafted from rods of German ebonite. Unlike the Palisandro, which has two model swirling colors, Cenote has four. Inspired by the natural beauty of Cenote Caverns, this pen contains swirls of blue, green, black, and purple. The pen's faceted shape accentuates the ripples and swirls of color. The pattern of each pen is drastically different and unique. Darkened ruthenium trims complement the mysterious, secretive nature of this pen. And like any other previous edition of pens that we've offered with swirls and varying designs, you actually get to pick this pen. So in each listing, there will be what they're called style numbers. And when you click on a particular style number, you will actually see the picture of the pens lined up with the front side and back side photographed. And you'll see the nib. So it'll be 14 karat flex or be 18 karat nib, and you'll see the nib size underneath it. So that particular pen and that particular nib size are locked in place as that particular style number. So if you're interested in the Cenote pen, you're going to have to make a mad dash for the website the moment that you get an email that this is available or you see it on social media and take a look at which styles that you love the best because they do vary quite greatly. This pen is mostly blue, a uh, little hints of green and that purple that I mentioned mostly in the grip section there, but they are wildly varied. So this pen may look one way and then the other pens will look a completely different style. So when you do select the particular style number, you'll see that image pop up. And let's say you put it into the cart, you are locked in and you will buy that particular pen. No one else will have it in that particular style. So when you do see and you go on the website and you see certain styles are, let's say, crossed out, that means that those are purchased by other customers. And unfortunately, since we're doing it this way, there's no accommodating nib swaps or, or cap swapping. It just would be too complicated then to then make notations and switch the images around. Um, but there is a very, very limited amount of these pens available. They're only limited to 70 pens. Um, they are not numbered, so despite the fact that they have a style number on them, they do not have the edition number engraved on the pen. The 70s pens are split between 18 karat and 14 karat gold nibs. And for the various gold nibs, you can see other videos where we've talked about Scribo, the 14 carats are flexible nibs and they're pretty fun. Um, they're available in either fine or medium or extra fine. And then there's also the 18 karat nibs, which have a much broader array of nib sizes that go from extra fine to triple broad. And like the Palisandro, the Cenotes start at $750, and you'll find these available on Tuesday on the Goldspot website. And just like the Scribo Palisandro fountain pens, these pens will be available starting at $750 exclusively at goldspot.com. So congrats to Toga Magurga for winning this week's giveaway of the Lamy Safari USA fountain pen. For this week's giveaway, I have a Caveco AL Sport Very Peri fountain pen. It's a prototype sample that we received for photography. If you're looking to still buy one of these pens, there are less than 20 Very Peris left. So I get on that quick. To enter in the giveaway, you must be subscribed to the Goldspot Pens channel, like this video, give it a big old thumbs up, and leave a comment with a question you'd like for me to answer in a future episode. I'll pick a question to answer in the next episode, and that will be our winner. Thank you for checking out this week's episode of the Write Stuff Podcast by Goldspot Pens. Now go out there, put your pen to paper, and write stuff. Until next time, stay inky, my friends. Take care.